Hi everyone, and welcome to create an animated particle slideshow in Adobe After Effects. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this course, we'll take you through step by step on how to create these striking particle animations and transitions to use them for your projects and social media videos like Instagram. Starting with how to use these ready-made templates found on Envato Elements, we'll go through how you can edit them to make them your own. Topics we cover will include how to use and edit the particle templates, how to create a particle slideshow transition from scratch, how to use trap code particular, and how to animate the text to blend them into your animation. By the end of the course, you'll have a better understanding of these tools and how to make an animated particle slideshow in After Effects. So sign in or sign up and let's get started. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Particle Slideshow course. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this lesson, we'll go through how to download, set up, and use the transition template videos available in Envato Elements. The templates available on the website are a very quick and easy way to add these striking animations to your projects. This is amazing if you're short on time and want to make these videos as fast as possible. So before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With just one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets such as the ones we'll be showcasing in this video. Millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. And you can cancel at any time. Subscribe now with the link in the description below. So let's start by heading over to the Envato Elements website. Make sure to select video templates from the menu on the side here, and then type in particle slideshow in the search bar here and click on the search button to find our particle slideshow templates. We've also included the link to the particular project in the description below. So from there, just select the pack, which looks like this one. And we can click into it to see a preview of how the particle slideshow template will look like as well. When you're ready, simply click on the download button to download it. We'll also be using some fonts in the project that you can find in the font section of Envato Elements. For example, we'll be using Amethyn, which is a textured brush font that we'll be using in the project. So feel free to download these as well if you want to follow along. So now let's head over to After Effects to take a quick look at the layout and gain an overview of the project. So now, as this is quite a large project, you may need to reduce the preview resolution down to half or even a quarter so that we can see what's going on in the preview panel in the middle here. So to do this, let's go over to this drop down menu here and select either half, a third, or a quarter, depending on how the After Effects is running on your computer. So now at the bottom here, you'll see that we have an all sequence comp open, which will be our final render comp once we've added all our photos to it. Going down the list of layers here, you'll notice that we've already been ordered sequentially, numbered from one to 20, like so which gives us a good variety of photos that we can potentially use for our animation. We can preview the image of each of the layers here by using the timeline. So just moving along to the correct section. For example, if we wanted to see sequence 17, we can highlight the layer over here and then move down to where it is on our timeline and then click on the correct timeline indicator to see what it looks like. Over on the left, we have the project panel, which has all been ordered in a similar way to the all sequence comp. So we can access all the layers here as well if we wanted to. So let's start by selecting the first folder, 
which is called sequence one over here. And if we open that up, you can see that we have these photo comps here, which we can put our photos into. Now to do this, all we need to do is double click on this to open up the photo comp. And then over here, we've got another comp called photo one here. Double click on that. And this is the composition that we'll place our photo into. So to do this, all we have to do is click and drag our photo into the project panel here. Or we can go to File, Import, and then select File to go to the location of your image to import it. So let's go ahead and import our photo into this Assets folder here. So just click and drag it to put it in like so. And then to put it into the Photo 1 comp, all we need to do is click and drag it in like so to place it inside. Now let's go ahead and make this fit into our project viewer like so. And then all we need to do from here is to resize the imported image by going inside the transform options here and then using the scale options to make it bigger or smaller like so. And then once you're happy with the size, let's head back into the all sequence composition by clicking on the all sequence tab here and then move to the correct time indicator. So we want to see sequence one. So make sure to move over to sequence one to see what it looks like. And you'll see that we have successfully added this image into our animation. Now let's go ahead and edit the text. So you'll see as we move into our timeline that we've got some text appearing in the animation as well. So let's go ahead and edit this by heading back over to the project panel here. And in the top left, we want to open up the text comp. So let's go and open up sequence one and open up text one like so. And then once we've opened up the text one composition, you'll see that we have the text layer here that we can just double click and then use the text tool here to edit our text. So I'm just going to change the text here like so. And then once you've finished editing your text, head back over to the all sequence comp and you'll find your text has been changed successfully. So now that we have done the text and the image, all we have to do is repeat the process for the other sequence layers for how, however many images that you want to use to complete your slideshow animation. Additionally, we can also edit the look and feel of the animation even further by going into the sequence one composition here, like so, by double clicking on the sequence one composition. And here you'll see four particle layers, one, two, and three. Now to edit these particle layers, we need to open up the effect controls panel, which is usually located on the top left here. Or you can simply go to window and select effect controls over here in the menu. Once you've opened that up, select one of the particle layers to see what options we have available. Now, remember in order to view the options in the effect controls panel here, we need to have trap code particular by Redgine installed. Then we can explore the options here, such as the particle options. So if we open this up, we can see that we can increase the lifespan, which is how long each particle will last for before they disappear. And we can also change the color of the particles, the opacity of the particles like so, and also the size of the particles. 
So we can experiment with all these different options to see what they look like in our video. Excellent. And then once you're happy with the way it looks, head back to the All Sequence Comp and then hit the Play Preview button to see what it looks like. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to create one of these animation transitions from scratch, which will allow you even greater flexibility, control and options. See you all there. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Particle Slideshow course. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this lesson, we'll learn how to animate your images. So let's begin by creating a new composition in After Effects. And we're going to go ahead and create a new custom composition. Make sure the lock aspect ratio is checked off. And we want to create a width of 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 30 frames per second and a duration of 20 seconds, which can always be changed later on. And then once we're happy with that, go ahead and rename this comp main comp like so, and then click OK. This will create our main composition for us to use. Now we need to create a, another composition with the same settings. So to do this, go over to your project panel here and right click on the empty space, selecting new composition. Now, automatically, the same settings should be available. So 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 30 frames per second and a duration of 20 seconds. And we're just going to rename this into Scene 01. Click OK. And then create one more comp, like so. And this time, we're going to rename this Image one and then select OK and once we've done creating our first three compositions we want to import our image by clicking and dragging it into the project panel like so or we can go to file import and then selecting file to go to the location of your image to import it that way you may also want to keep things neat and tidy by creating an image folder by clicking on the image by clicking on the create new folder button at the bottom here. And then we're just going to rename this images. And then click and drag the image into the images folder like so. This will keep things neat and tidy for when we begin to add more and more images into the project. Now, once you've done that, make sure your image composition is selected at the bottom here like so. And we can just simply click and drag our image into the composition, which will place it into our viewer like this. Now, you can see that our image is a little bit too big for our for our screen. So let's go ahead and go into the transform options of our image like this, and then just scale it down so that it fits like so. Excellent. And then once you're happy with the size, we need to add an adjustment layer to the composition by going to layer, new, and then selecting adjustment layer like so. Make sure that it is selected and then at the top of the uh, layer stack. So make sure it's above our image like this. And then once you've done that, we want to go to the effects and presets panel, which is usually located over on the right here. Again, if it's not, go to Windows and select effects and presets. And then once it's appeared here in the search bar, we want to go ahead and type in extract, find the extract effect here, and then just go ahead and double click it to apply it to our selected layer, which is the adjustment layer here. And then we want to go to the first frame of our timeline, like so. And then we want to create a keyframe 
for black points. Now to do this, just hit, simply click on the stopwatch icon here. And if we open up our adjustment layer, you'll see that under extract, we have created a keyframe at the very beginning of our timeline, like this. Now change the value of black points to 255, which will make our image go completely black, like so. And then from here, let's go ahead and zoom in to the timeline, like this. And then we want to be able to see how many frames we will be using clearly, like so. And then we want to move forwards into the timeline to around, let's say, four seconds. So this is a little bit too close. So let's zoom out a little bit and then just go to the four second mark in our timeline here. And then we want to change the value of black point back to zero to create a second keyframe. Excellent. Now this will make your image appear again. So now if we scrub backwards and forwards in our timeline, you'll notice how we've created this cool image reveal animation, like so. Excellent. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to create particles using trap code particular. See you all there. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Particle Slideshow course. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this lesson we'll learn how to create particles using trap code particular. So let's begin by closing this image one comp, like so, and then open up the scene one composition. Now, if this isn't open, go over to your project panel here, select scene 01 and double click it to open it. Now let's go ahead and click and drag our image 01 composition into our scene 01 composition like so. And this will add this to the composition. So you can see now if we scrub backwards and forwards in the timeline, how our image 01 has been added. And then we want to convert this layer into a 3D layer by clicking on the cube icon here like so. Now, if you don't see these options available, you need to click on one of the small buttons over here on the left to open it up. Excellent. Now, from here, we want to create a duplicate of this layer. So select it and then press Control D on the keyboard and then hide the bottom layer here by clicking on the eye icon. Now we need to create a solid layer by going over on the top menu here and select layer, new, and then select solid. And now in the solid settings here, let's rename this particles like so. And then we want to make sure that the color has been set to pure black. Click OK. And then once this has all been done, click OK to create your new particles black solid layer. Now with the particles layer selected, we want to go over to the effect and presets panel here. And we want to search for particular like so. And under here, under RG trap code, we've got particular. So just go ahead and double click on this effect here to add it to the particles layer like so. Now we go over to the effect and controls panel. So making sure the particles layer is selected. You'll see now that we've got the trap code particular options available to us. So from here, we want to open up the emitter options by clicking on the arrow here. And then make sure you are at the very beginning of the timeline. And we want to add a keyframe for particles per second by clicking on the stopwatch value or the stopwatch icon and then changing the values here from 100 to 20,000. And then we want to move the timeline forward to three seconds. So let's zoom into the timeline here so we can see these seconds more clearly. 
And then once we're at three seconds, we can change the value of the particles down to zero. So let's go ahead and put this on using our keyboard like so. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and change the emitter type from point to layer. And then we want to change the velocity from 100 to 25. And from here, we want to open up the layer emitter options here. And then we want to change it from layer from none to the third option, which is our third layer here, image 01. And then change the layer sampling option to current time. Now after changing these settings, you should see the particles effect starting to take shape. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here so you can see what it looks like. So you can see some of the particles affecting our image here like so. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and open the particle master, which is over here. And now we're going to change the following. So change the life per second from three to four, life random from 0% to 100%, spear feather from 50 to zero. And then we want the particle size here from five. So make sure to click it and then select three and then size random from 0% to 100%. And you should see how these options are slowly affecting the look of our particles over in the viewer here. Now let's go ahead and open up size over life, like so. And we want to expand the panel window here, like this. And just so that we can see the presets control here. And we want to choose the smooth hill presets here, like this. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and open up the physics master section, which is down here. So now that we're finished with the particle master, let's go ahead and close this down like this. And with the physics master section open, let's go ahead and expand the air options. And we want to change the wind in the Z axis here from zero to minus 200. We want to open up the turbulence field here. And we want to affect the position from zero to 250 and we want to change the scale from one to three and then once that's done we can go ahead and close the physics master excellent so now that we're happy with the way it looks so far let's go ahead and move the timeline like this so you can sort of see how the particles are looking and then just move it all the way to the beginning of the timeline, like this. And from here, we want to duplicate the particles layer. So select the particles layer and press Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. And then on the new duplicated particles layer, we want to open up the emitter settings here and change the particles per second to 5,000 and then in Particle Master, we want to change the life per second from four to three. And then we want to change the size from three to 10, like so. And just move forward in the timeline here, just to see how this is affecting the look of our image. And then we want to go over to Physics and over in the wind position, which is over here, we want to change the Z position here to minus 100. Excellent. 
Now let's go ahead and duplicate the particles layer one more time. So select it and press Control D on the keyboard. And then from here, let's go ahead and change these settings. So for the particles per second, let's go over to the emitter. Now, because this is a keyframed option, make sure that we're at the very beginning of our timeline. So you can see as we open up our particles layer, we've got some keyframes here. So over in the particles per second option here, we want to change this to 800 with a velocity of five. And let's go over to the velocity which is in physics and for the uh, wind position here we want to go to minus 60 and then under the turbulence field we want to change the effect position down to zero excellent so now you can see how that has affected our animation by scrubbing backwards and forwards in our timeline like this. And we can also preview it by going all the way back to the beginning of our timeline and clicking on the play preview button here, like so. Excellent. So now you can see that we've got this cool image reveal animation with some particle effects to go with it. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to set up the camera. See you all there. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Particle Slideshow course. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this lesson, we'll learn how to create and set up a camera for our animation. So now that we've got our particle effects and image animation ready, it's time to create some cool rotational camera animations to go with it. So staying within the scene one composition, let's go and create a new camera by going to layer, new, and then selecting camera. Now in the camera settings, we want to choose 35 millimeter preset, like so, and then click OK to select it. Great. Now you can see that we've got a camera layer like so. Now we want to create a null object by going to layer, new, and then select null object. And then just place this on top of our camera layer like this. And then we want to parent our camera to the null object by using the pick whip here and then clicking and dragging it to select the null object like so. Or we can use the drop down menu here and selecting null. Excellent. Now, once we've done that, we want to create a 3D camera or, or a 3D null object. So make sure that the null object has been converted into a 3D layer by clicking on the cube icon here like this. And then with the null object selected, press P on the keyboard to open the position options. And then we want to press shift R to open up the rotation options like this. So now that it's a 3D layer, you can see we've got all three rotation options. So X, Y, and Z like so. And now we want to make sure we're on the very first frame of our timeline. And we want to add a keyframe for our positions. So let's go ahead and add a keyframe for position here like that. And now we also want to add one for the Z rotation. And we want to change the value for the Z rotation to minus eight degrees like so. Then we want to go to around eight seconds in our timeline like this. And then from here, we want to change the value of our Z rotation to plus eight degrees. Now, whilst we're here, we can also move the Z position a little bit closer to the camera. So let's go ahead and 
over in the Z uh, in the position options here, we can change the third option here and just click and drag it to zoom it into the camera just to give it a little bit of a zoom in effect like so. So just zoom in until you're happy with the way that it looks. And then if we just go back to our timeline here, we can click play preview to see what it looks like. And you can see that we've got this rotational camera effect in our animation. Excellent. Now you'll notice here that now that we've rotated our image, we've got these black corners in our animation. So we can fix that by again going over to the position options here and then just zoom it in until it's filled. And then hopefully if we go back to eight seconds, we can then just zoom this in a little bit more to increase the zoom in effect. So now you see that we filled in the corners here. So if we preview our animation, you'll see that we've got no black corners in our screen. Excellent. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to add and animate the text. See you all there. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Particle Slideshow course. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this lesson we'll learn how to add and animate the text. So now that we have completed our particles animation, the next thing we want to add is the text. So to do this, let's go ahead and create a new composition by going to Composition and selecting a new composition like so. And let's go ahead and call this one text 01. And let's go ahead and change the width to 1000 and the height to 300. Click OK once you're happy with that. And then this will open up the text 01 comp. Now let's go ahead and use the text tool, which is located on the top here. And then click on our composition and then just type in anything that you want. So let's go ahead and type in particles. I'm just going to change this to full so you can see a higher resolution of what we are typing in. And then we want to change the font of this so that it better fits our animation. So let's go ahead and highlight this. And over in the character panel here, we're going to choose a script font, which is Amethon, which you can download in the Envato's, Envato Elements website. And then we can also go ahead in the character panel here, just increase the size of the text like this and then using the selection tool here we can go ahead and move this back into the middle like so excellent and then once you're happy with the way that your text looks we can go ahead and close this comp and then click and drag the text O1 composition into the scene O1 comp, like so. Cool. And now you'll see straight away that we've got the particles text on top of our animation. So let's go ahead and convert the text O1 comp into a 3D layer by clicking on the cube icon here, like so. And then make sure we're at the very beginning of the timeline here. And then with the text 01 comp selected, press T on the keyboard to open up the opacity options. And we want to add a keyframe for opacity and change the value to zero, just so it's not beginning or, or shown in the beginning of our animation. Move forward to one second like this, and then change the opacity to 80%. So let's make sure we've selected the opacity here like that. So now you'll see that it's slowly fading in 
in our animation like so. And now with the text layer still selected, press P on the keyboard to open up the position options. And then we want to add a keyframe at the very beginning of the text here. So press uh, the click on the keyframe icon here, the stopwatch icon to add a keyframe. And then we want to move forward a few seconds. So let's say to about four seconds here, just as an example. And we want to change the Z position until the text moves too far forwards into the camera and it disappears like so. Excellent. So now you'll see that it's too far forwards for the camera to see it. And now we can move the text in our animation. Excellent. So you can preview how the animation looks by clicking on the play preview button here, like so. And then remember, you can always go back to the text 01 composition and then change the way that your text looks for your animation. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to add more images to the slideshow. See you all there. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Particle Slideshow course. I'm Jonathan Lamb, a digital artist from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this lesson we'll learn how to add more images for the slideshow animation. So now that we have completed the scene one comp animation, let's go ahead and close this, and then click and drag it from the project panel into our main comp, like so. Then we want to add a new adjustment layer. So go to layer, new, and then select adjustment layer. And then in the effect and presets panel here, we want to go ahead and search for curves. Once you found that under color correction, double click on it to add it to our adjustment layer and then adjust the curves to create more contrast for the image. So if we move forward in our timeline to see what our image looks like, so let's make it fit to see a bigger preview of our image. We're just, just, we're just going to move the curve at the bottom down a little bit here and then up a little bit here to improve the contrast like so. Then we're going to go to Effect and Presets again. And from here, we're going to go ahead and look for Vibrance. Double click on that to add that to our adjustment layer. And then we're going to move the adjustment value from zero to either 30 or 40. And then change the saturation from any value between one and five like so. Now go back to the project panel here and we want to duplicate the scene one comp by pressing control D on the keyboard to create a scene two comp. Now open up the scene two comp here. And before we do anything inside scene two, let's go ahead and go back to the main composition and we want to click and drag the scene two comp into the main comp here, like so. And we want to move our scene two comp in our timeline to a position where our scene 01 composition ends. So just around the eight second or let's say seven second mark. So let's move this here and let's say five seconds. So just around the five second mark here. And we want to make sure that the scene two comp is above the scene one comp. Now within the scene two composition, we want to duplicate the image 01 composition inside our project panel. 
So go and press Control D on the keyboard to create image O2. And we want to hold the Alt key on the keyboard and then click and drag our new image to composition into our scene to composition here. And we want to place it on top of image one. And this will go ahead and replace our image one composition with our new image two composition. And now we can go ahead and open up the image two comp and replace the image two with a new image. So go over to the images folder here and we're just going to place a new image by clicking and dragging it like so and then just click and drag it into the new image comp to replace it and we can go ahead and delete the old image so now we've got a new image for image 2 and then if we go back to scene 2 we can delete our old image 01 compositions like so and then duplicate image 2 by pressing control D on the keyboard and then hiding the new duplicate layer and then if we scrub backwards and forwards in our timeline you'll see we've got this new image animation for our scene 2 and if we go back to our main comp you'll see how this transitions from scene 1 to scene two, like so. Excellent. And then all we need to do is repeat the previous steps, such as creating the particle layers and creating a new text composition to add even more images to your animation. So that's it for this video. Feel free to experiment with different options and effects that we've gone through over the course to come up with your own unique particle effects. I hope you've learned some new things in After Effects that you haven't been able to use before and that you can use them to create your own future animations and designs. I had a lot of fun creating this course, so thanks for watching. Good luck creating your own particle slideshow animations, and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.